around the fire, are we? But, I can um, hold one if you want one. No, <laughs> I'm not <laughs> here. I've got a lighter um, if I would see no, it. No, no, maybe. Some paper. <laughs> well, I think maybe Thursday night you guys will have a good fire. Um, much has been said already this week about you know our, our life in Christ and about um, mission, the Great Commission. And we've heard uh, now for two days, Father Doug has talked about what the gospel is, and then he did a really good job this morning of you know, comparing the Old Testament of the idea of tending the garden to, to the Great Commission, to um, what we're all about now uh, under the New Covenant. And my thoughts for this evening were, um, knowing what was coming up in the teaching today, and having sat there and listened to it myself, um, when we talk about, uh, like Father Doug today talked about, is, you know, is evangelism new? Well, we learned that it is not new. In fact, it's a very old thing, uh, but a very necessary thing. And my thoughts were, what was it that... <laughs> Sorry. Wait, are you all right? Um, my, my, thoughts, my thoughts were, um, one of the things that when I was younger, what would often overwhelm me about sharing my testimony, like we saw Elijah, who was, as we say in Arkansas, uh, nervous as a cat eating cucumbers. He just hadn't, you know, uh, done that whole heck of a lot. Which so, but it's absolutely normal. So, no, no big deal. He did a great job. Um, and sharing our faith. Um, when I was a little Baptist kid, we called it witnessing, and we would go out. And it would often seem overwhelming. I would read these passages in the Scripture about uh, taking care of the poor. You know. We were supposed to serve the poor, and then on the other side, Jesus says, the poor you'll always have with you, but it didn't negate the fact that we were to try to help. And when you look at the world as a whole, it can be very overwhelming. Um, I remember reading about um, poverty in the state that I live in, in the state of Arkansas. And um, indeed, for children under the, years of eight, under the uh, age of 18, um, in some places in Arkansas, there, it's, it's a crisis having food. And I remember thinking, I know what the Lord teaches about this. I know what the Word of God says. I want to do something, but you look at the problem, and it's so vast. And I just remember feeling overwhelmed. What can I do? And I got the idea. I got the thought. I hope it was the Holy Spirit. You know, I can't feed the whole state of Arkansas. I can't feed every hungry person in the United States of America where I live. And, or Canada or Mexico for that matter. And I can't feed all of the hungry of the world, but I can help feed the hungry in my town. I can help the people where God has placed me. And I think that's a very important thing. We can get overwhelmed with this great big picture of evangelism and preaching the gospel and helping the poor, but at the end of the day, we're not called to witness, I know figuratively we are, but practically, existentially, we're not called to witness to the entire world, just us ourselves. Nobody's going to tune in to CNN and hear us talk about Jesus. So we can't, it's not possible for us to witness to the whole world in reality, but we can witness to the people in our school, like, like you did, Jill, uh, and like these young people in here. Um, I can't al always pray as much as I should, but I, I can pray a little bit. There's a little bit I can do. Um, and I can make a difference where God has planted me. There's a story about St. Augustine. He was out planting uh, a row of corn one day, and he was asked, um, what if, um, what if you knew, one, one of the monks around him, or other priests said, well, you know, Father Augustine, if you knew you, were, you had five minutes to live, what would you do? And it was surprising. I thought it was going to be something like pray or get up and, I don't know, say mass, right? I didn't know what he was going to say. Said, what would you do? And St. Augustine what sat up off his knees and said, I would finish planting this row. <laughs> I would finish planting this row. I would plant this row because God is going to do with this row of corn what he's going to do after I'm gone. I would finish. You see, we, when we share our testimony, when we evangelize, we'll be hearing more about that 
uh, tomorrow and the days to come, uh, we, we sow a seed. Um, we share our faith. We sow a seed. But so many Christians would be in a lot better place when it comes to evangelism if they realize that getting people saved is not their job. Um, getting people into the church, getting people baptized, not their job. Good thing, yeah, but that's not your principal job. Your principal job, your first job, is to witness to the people in your town, in your community, to, to grow where you, have been, where you have been placed. And then after you've grown, where you've been planted, to in turn turn around and plant. Um, I'll leave you with this thought. A lot of people are saying, well, gosh, the world is so vast. There are so many lost people. There are so many people who don't know Jesus or are caught up in all kinds of other lifestyles. Um, how can I, in this great, big world of I don't know how many billion people now populate the planet, but with all this vast expanse of people, what can little old me do? Um, there's a story about a man that was walking along a beach, and um, it was a certain time of year when the tide would bring in thousands of starfish. And when the tide would roll in, you've seen how it does. It rolls in whoosh, and throws wood and trash or whatever onto the beach, and then it recedes. And eventually, it deposits things from the ocean onto the uh, onto the beach. And there was this uh, young man that was walking along and he saw all of these thousands and thousands of starfish. And as he walked along, he would stoop down as he came to a starfish and throw it back in. Uh, and that starfish most likely would have probably been able to get back out to tide and you know swim on. And he picked up another one and he threw it. And he did this for an hour or so. Well, directly, another man came walking in the opposite direction, and he was throwing starfish in. And the man stopped, and he said, young man, what are you doing? And he said, I'm saving starfish. And the, the older man said, you fool, are you kidding me? Look at, look, at, look at the beach, there are thousands of them. You know, he said, what difference can you make? And the young boy smiled, and he reached out, and he picked up a starfish, and threw it in the ocean, and he said it made a difference to that one. <laughs> That's what we're called to do. Yep. So keep that in mind. You may be only to change. You may only change the life of one person. Um, I didn't use, really realize that until a little bit later in my ministry and in my career, where sometimes my ministry and my career kind of gel together, and I end up being a cop priest or bishop, or I don't know what it, I am, but where where the two careers collide. And I've had people come up to me um, 20, 25 years later after they met me on either the street, even in some cases where I, in that career, had arrested someone and had somebody come and say, do you remember me? And I've said, you know, no, I'm, you know, I've arrested thousands of people, so I don't know, I don't, I'm sorry, I don't remember you. Well, you know what? When you arrested me, you treated me decently, and you told me about Jesus, and so let me tell you where I am now. And I, I don't even remember the person. Uh, but they said that I said some kind words to them and showed them a little bit of mercy and kindness, even though I had to do my job. And I said, look, you know, God loves you. Yeah, you've, you've really messed up big time, uh, but it's not the end of the world. And so sometimes we can sow those seeds in the lives of people, and we completely forget about it, and we go on. And this happens to me, especially since I retired, over and over, people come and say, do you remember you came to my house and told me that my brother had been killed? You know, no, I don't, I don't remember. Well, let me tell you what the difference that made to my family, how, how you handled that. <laughs> and it was completely, you know, I give God the glory for that. It was just completely beyond my comprehension at that time. So by giving a kind word, by sharing the gospel, by doing evangelism, sometimes you can do a tiny thing, like throw a starfish back into the ocean where millions of starfish live, um, but it makes a difference to that starfish. And the whole metaphor bleeding over it, when you do that, when you sow that seed, when you sow into the life of a human being, um, you may forget all about it, but that starfish, that person, won't forget. So just keep that in mind as well. Thank you. Good. Amen. Good.
Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Thanks.